Okay, I'm back. Sorry it took me me a little while to do this. I'm just getting I'm just getting my um iPad warmed up for this cook. Okay, the pit temperature right now is showing 170 degrees. And I'm gonna kind of show you this is the nice thing about having a regulator for my grill. And like I said, this smoke bot would work for a Joe Commander or a big Kokomo or whatever they call it. It's the red grill, whereas mine is green. But this actually tells you, and I think I did this in another video. I'm just refreshing you guys' memory. But it actually tells me what the great temperature is, what I have my grill set to. And eventually, um, food one down here will eventually tell me what the what the brisket's temperature is. And it will actually alert me at night. I'll set a... Um, an alarm that if my grill gets 20, 20 degrees, um, if it gets over 20, 20 degrees past, if it goes 20 degrees up or down, it'll alert me and tell me that I need to come out and, uh, food alarm. Oh, Food alarm alerts you when the, oh, passes the set point of this alarm. Okay, so, all right, there we go. All right, we're going to save that. Um, I don't want to log out. I obviously want that on, that on, and the food alarm. Okay, and I'm saving all of that. Okay, so I have this set up. As soon as it gets to 225 to 250, I'll go ahead and put my, my brisket on. I've already put the smoking chips if you have a place setter, plate setter on your grill, now this is only for the Big Green Eggs and the Commander Joes, I believe, have, have plate setters. You want feet up and not feet down. Otherwise, you won't be able to get your brisket on your grill. And you want a good drip pan. And you want to fill your drip pan with water. Now, later on, for a portion of this cook... You want to have a brand spanking new clean spray bottle. And I'm going to make sure that I put tape on this and say for cooking only so that my husband doesn't get a hold of it and turn it into a chemical bottle. Now, this has never been used. It's brand new. What we're going to do is we're going to do a combination of a apple cider vinegar with apple juice. And we're going to spritz the brisket every 45 minutes for the first couple of hours. So am I going to have to stay up and do that? Yes. Am I going to be able to film it with you guys? No. What I'm going to do is once I tell you the brisket is on the grill, I'm going to let you guys go for the night and maybe do small updates. They may be done in the bedroom upstairs versus down here because my husband obviously is going to try to get... Um, some sleep tonight and I don't want to bug him as as much as as actually I take that back I lost my train of thought I don't want to bug him when he's trying to sleep my husband actually sleeps downstairs and has tv on with some of the dogs and it's much cooler downstairs than it has been upstairs although I do have a brand new air conditioning in the master bedroom and it's hit or miss if that thing is holding its temperature. Some nights I'm I'm really hot and some nights I'm okay. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But I will have to go somewhat in and out. So I'm probably going to be up for a, quite a while um, doing this brisket. And again, like I said, I'm not going to film any of that part. I may give you little updates if I'm quiet and talking like this because I don't want to wake my husband up. And I'll actually see if my husband will be kind enough and have his TV cranked really loud, because if he does that, then I'm not gonna, I'll have to record up in the bedroom.
So, like I said, you're not going to need to do anything to the brisket for the time being. But if you do have, if you are going to use a temperature probe, and let me go find mine. It may actually be, yeah, it probably is outside. Let me stop the, the uh, video for a second. I'll be right back. I'm going to go check if the, if the uh, probe is outside. Be right back. And, of course, that's exactly where it is. Now, if you're going to use a probe that plugs in, you're going to want to put it on the point. You're going to want to put it in the thickest part of the point and not the thin part because the thin part will give you a false sense of security when it tells you that the point is done or the flat is done and the point is still not even close to being done. So I'm just going to dig my thermometer in the middle and I'm going to push it quite a ways in and I'm going to let this rest. Now a lot of barbecuers that do briskets will have an instant read thermometer or they use what they call the meat eater. Meat eater. I think it, that's it. It's M-E-A-T-E-R, -E I believe, is the brand of probes. They are not cheap. I do not own any of them. It's maybe on my bucket list of maybe having at some point. There are pros and cons with them, and um, you would have to read reviews. Like I said, they're not cheap. A set of four of them for and with the black and everything is about 400 bucks. So they're they're expensive, but the majority of the eggers, and when I say eggers, I mean the big the people that own the big green egg, that's what they use. Now, any instant read thermometer will work in a pinch. You don't have to have a Bluetooth one, although having a probe that connects to your regulator does help because that will monitor your grill for you so that you don't you you don't have to guess where your meat temperature is now in addition to the probe i do have my big green egg thermometer right here and i'm going to have that out i probably will not use it tonight but i'm going to keep it right next to the stove um because unless my brisket does something spectacular tonight and hits the, the 205 in, in about six hours, which I know it won't. It will take a long time for this to hit that temperature. Okay, so my, my pit temperature right now is 224. And when I looked at, at the um, thermometer on my egg, it was showing right around the same degree. What you just want to do before you even put your meat onto the grill is make sure it stays at a temperature that it doesn't keep climbing up and down. One nice thing about this is if you look on this side, that's the damper. So my damper on top will close and open depending on how much air it needs. Now I will close the bottom of, of the egg. I'll, I'll close the somewhat so that it's not fully opened all night. You might be hearing ice and I should introduce you guys to the big boy that I keep talk, always talking about. That is my Siberian Husky ice. Ice was a rescue. I won't get into how I have ice, but I've had ice for five years now and he's been a joy to have. Um, he gets along with my Chihuahuas very well, and my Pomeranian. They're like best buddies. They follow each other on the main level, and he's very protective of my little guys. And he's just a really, really, really sweet boy, and we're blessed to have him. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. you. But he is whining. He wants to go out. There'll be plenty of time to go out, Ice. Don't worry. So, some things that I thought about that you might have questions about. Do you need to add more smoking chunks? The answer is no. Usually, the brisket will take, within the first three hours, will take as much smoke as it can, it can get. That'll penetrate the meat. Once that happens, 
you don't need to put more smoking chips in because it will quit taking those flavors on. What you do or might need to add later on, and if you filled up your basket or wherever you put your natural charcoal up, if you put enough charcoal, that should hold you for the entire cook, especially if you know how to regulate your grill very well and you can maintain a temperature. Now, I'm not saying that down the road, my egg won't change temperatures. That happens more often than not. And it, I have, uh, bleh, I'm on several forums for the big green egg. I've also watched a lot of YouTube videos with people that do smokes. And a lot of times, temperatures will either go up or they'll go down, and you just need to be alerted for that change so that you can make adjustments to your grill. Usually, if the temperature starts plummeting, you should go check your grill to make sure that, one, you have enough charcoals left in, in the firebox. If you don't have enough charcoal, add some more, relight it, and the temperature should go back up. Now, if your grill is getting too hot, that usually means that the damper hasn't either closed all the way or hasn't allowed enough heat to dissipate. So in that case, what you need to do is you need to go check it and maybe you need to close the damper a little bit more. Now, my pit temperature is at 147 degrees right now, and I'm going to run up outside. I'm going to stop the video for a second. I'm going to slide the bottom closed and let my big guy out. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, I'm making a little adjustments. The dogs are going in and out for a minute. My pit temp just hit 250 degrees, and that's what I'm showing on the egg. Now, what I need to do is I need to monitor and make sure that this holds 250 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a timer for about five minutes. And I can see it's it's going to adjust itself a little bit. It went up to 251. Ideally, you want to give your grill about a 10 degree window. So it can go up to 260 or down to... 240 and you're probably still within the range that you want your grill to be in. It's a science. Sometimes it, it's harder to monitor the grill. Now the grill is going to definitely plummet once the brisket goes on and that goes for any cook that you do on a grill. It's going to drop the temperature and you're going to have to wait for the temperature to go back up once the food is on it. And my grill, <coughs> excuse me, my grill is still climbing, so I'm going to go outside. I'm going to stop the video, go back outside, and see if I need to adjust the damper a little bit. I wish I could bring you guys with, but like I said, my iPhone doesn't do a lot of good recordings, especially at night in dark settings. And I wish it, it did. And actually, let me see. There's a little button up here. But I don't know. That might be just taking photos. Yeah, it's not, not putting a light on. So I'm like going, okay, there is no light on there. All right, so I'll be back in a few minutes and give you an update. Okay, I am back. I just put the brisket on. It's 930. If this cook goes according to plan... By 9.30 tomorrow, we'll be 12 hours in. And if it goes to 16, that would be 9, 10, 11, 12. That'd be about 1 o'clock. And if I give it the 4-hour rest, we'd be eating about in the 5 o'clock window. I have a feeling this is going to cook even longer than that. So I'm thinking it might be a later dinner, but I have some playroom. Now, if this gets done earlier in the day... That's fine, too. We can always have a lunch and then leftovers at night. Now, I will also tell you with the brisket, you will not get any gravy out of it, especially if you're doing it on the egg, unless you have a really, really good drip pan that you don't mind 
destroying during this long cook. So what I always suggest is if you want gravy with your brisket is to do the stove top and I'm going to show you what I use. And I'm again, I'm not sponsored, so I'm not sponsored. I don't make money from my channel because I only have a hundred of you so far. I'm growing it and whether or not I monetize at some point down the line, I'll be up for debate. It'll be a long conversation I'll have to have. But my grocery store, and I think I got this at Costco. I might have gotten it at a local grocery store. But this is the Better Than Bouillon. And this happens to be the roast beef-based bouillon. And it gives you, um, it gives you in the instructions on the back on how to use it. And this actually makes a really, really good gravy. Now, if you don't have this handy, the next best thing is to get a good brown gravy. We use generic because I can't really tell the difference between the McCormick's name brand gravy stuff and the generic gravy. But my husband usually handles the gravy. Now, what would you serve with the beef brisket is up to you. Anything that pairs well with, with beef would be the way to go. And I'm sorry you guys are not really seeing, getting a good shot. I'll keep you guys over here. Um, potatoes. You could do roasted potatoes. You could do baked potatoes. You could certainly do mashed potatoes. We plan on having mashed potatoes tomorrow. And like I said, we're really far out from that point of the cook. Uh, Vegetable. Any any vegetable would go really well with the brisket. We're probably going to do sweet corn and maybe a garden salad. Or if it's really, really, really hot and you don't feel like cooking, do the tomato and mozzarella salad that I did the other night that it was posted on uh, Monday, that you saw on Monday, because you're not going to see this for several days. And just to let you guys know, and it's probably a little late in this video, this is going to be a multi-day video. I can already tell you these videos are going to be long. They're going to be more exciting probably tomorrow morning. I can't really update you guys much tonight because, again, you won't really be seeing the grill all that much at night. And that's just because I don't have a way to... To film now, if I put a new battery in the camcorder and I remember this time to put the video mic in, I may do that in the middle of the night if I happen to be checking the grill. Now my grill has regulated to 250 degrees and it's sort of holding that. I actually kicked up the grill to 265 um, just because my grill is going to play and fluctuate for a while with this temperature, and that's normal when you first put the brisket on. Like I said, for the, probably for the first hour, you're not gonna wanna do anything with the brisket. About an hour in, you're going to want to fill your, your spray bottle, and you're going to want to just spray the top of the brisket. What that does is it keeps the brisket moist. It'll get a nice spark when you do that. It also can get a nice flavor. Now, the last time I made brisket, I think when I wrapped it, I wrapped it in aluminum foil and I put a little bit of coffee in there. And that's fine to do. Um, there are recipes, you'd have to Google it, but there are recipes that you can use for the brisket. I'm gonna just use the basic apple cider and apple juice solution as not to take away from the brisket its taste. So at this point of the video, I'm going to call it quits. Unless anything exciting happens at night, I may give you an update and it'll probably be done in the bedroom. So if I'm laying in bed, you'll know it's part of the brisket series. Again, I really can't take you outside and show you anything. It's dark out, but tomorrow morning, we will definitely be um, updating you as, as the, the time for the brisket has, has gone. So I'm going to call it a night tonight. If it, something comes up, I'll be back. And 
there'll be more of this video.